Pikes National Historical Park. I am Ranger Emily. What do revolutions have in common? What are these people challenging? Status quo. Status quo. Monarchy. Hierarchy. Class division. In 1848 is when we have the first women's rights convention in America. Women are oppressed. Women are treated as children. And they're going to have a convention to fix that problem. Now, at this convention, they were presented a declaration of sentiments. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. And the most radical thing they debated at this convention was the right to vote. But I would argue the most radical idea and the most important thing that came from this convention is the idea that women are human beings. It was a huge step towards progress, towards equality. Marilyn, do a photo bomb. Over here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking very serious. These women need to be as well known as George Washington, as far as I'm concerned. Notice how there's no one around here. No one, very few people. Oh, this is so surreal. Oh my God, holy cow. This is freaking cool. <laughs> my heroes were in this building. It's really hard for me not to just ugly cry right now. This is a huge part of American history. This building, this place, this town, and we're in here by ourselves. Women's history needs more attention than this. My name's Marilyn Artis, and I'm a artist from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I always love highlighting women within my work. And years ago, I read a book about the suffrage movement, and I fell in love with that era. I met all these women I'd never, ever heard about, and I was just hooked to the suffrage history. When I realized the big 100th anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment was coming up, I knew I wanted to do something really big. After the last presidential election, it was so contentious, and I really felt like everybody needed to serve their country and do something positive. And how I could serve my country was I could make art. I could make powerful, positive art that would impact women and history. Her flag is happening. It's not just something I've been dreaming about for two years. It's actually happening. We're going to Albany, New York. I said that right, right, right? Did I say that right? I'm just going to so many places I've never been before. Just this incredible journey to see this country coast to coast. Her Flag is a travel art project to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. I came up with this idea of traveling to all 36 states that ratified the 19th Amendment in order, over 14 months, 17 separate trips, on and off the road, and I've collaborated with a woman artist in each state, and they have created artwork that has been turned into a stripe, and we're making a flag that has 36 stripes, one for each of the ratifying states. They're sewn in order of ratification, which makes the travel super crazy, but that's the magic of it. I know Boston like that. Oh, so hands. good, so good you know Boston. Use the right two lanes to keep right onto Beacon Street. Use any uh, lane to turn Okay, you have right two navs going at the same time. I guess I do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it's one of the oldest buildings in the United States, so it's incredible to sew Massachusetts stripe here in this historic building. History nerding out a little bit, loving it. <laughs> So this is Carrie Percival, and she is the artist that created the artwork to represent Massachusetts. So I did like a historical freeze style because a lot of 18th and 19th century art is in that style. 
there's such a treasure trove of history of people strategizing and being creative and working on this thing from all different angles. There's so many people that came before us. It's so inspiring. The first people to protest in front of the White House were the suffrage fighters, and this was scandalous. They were spit on, they were knocked down, they were yelled at, they were arrested, and they stood vigil for months on end. Born in Seneca Falls, New York in 1848, the suffrage movement, in the words of leader Carrie Chapman Catt, was a long story of hard work and heartaches, but it was crowned by victory. In the 19th Amendment, the right of women to vote. When the 19th Amendment was passed in 1920, not all women magically were voting. It was largely white, wealthier women. Women of color, Asian American, African American, Native women were not granted the right to vote. There were laws in all the 50 states that were a little different, and each group of women had to be fought for to get their right to vote. It wasn't until 1965 and the Voting Rights Act was passed that all women would have the right to vote in the United States. It was really important to me that this flag had equal representation of white women and women of color. Women of color were a critical part of the struggle for the passing of the 19th Amendment. When most people think of the suffrage fight in the United States, they don't think about the role that Native American women played. Early suffrage fighters Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott spent time with the Haudenosaunee people of the Six Nations Confederacy in New York State. Women in all these tribes were equal to men and played roles in governing and decision-making at the highest levels in their communities. Stanton, Mott, and other suffrage fighters were inspired by the women leaders of the Native tribes and wanted equality for themselves. At this time in America, when women got married, they relinquished all rights to their husbands and were not considered equal citizens. Soon after visiting the Haudenosaunee lands, they organized the first women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York, and thus began the women's rights movement. This is the third trip of 17 trips. We're in Austin, Texas today. And my husband, Andy, and my son, Austin, is here. We had a crazy, rough night. Emergency room was involved. Fire ants were involved. So, uh, yeah, I'm tired. Everybody make it through? I love my family, but it's made it, you know, a little challenging today. The final flag will be 18 feet by 26 feet. It's huge, very, very big. And it's made out of outdoor UV grade fabric. It's meant to hang on the outside of a building. I want it somewhere where people can see it, interact with it, and hopefully raise awareness about this anniversary. The Union or Starfield has got the big votes for women, the iconic button. So I wanted for people to instantly know this flag is about women. You know, it's 100 years since this was ratified and it's an opportunity to think about women's participation in government and democracy. What are we doing in 100 years? What do we need to work on? There she is so far! <laughs> I really hope that in talking about this, we can get more women to run for office. We all know a woman who should be running for office, and there are not enough of us in government making decisions, writing policy, and we need to be in there. A record number of women will be on the ballot Tuesday. The number of female congressional candidates has increased by 44% since 2012, and women of color have increased by 75%. Nearly half of the 50 states have never sent a woman to the Senate, and there are five that have never even sent a representative who is a female to the House of Representatives. I'm the 10th woman to ever serve our city council since 1890, and the second woman of color. When people clap and say, oh, you're the second woman of color to ever serve, I'm like, we shouldn't have this conversation in 2020. We should be well down the road uh, on 30, 40. I'm the first Asian American woman to serve in the Oklahoma legislature, and quite frankly, there weren't very many Asian women in politics across the country. 
It's important for us to continue to have women in these positions so other young girls can see. We want them to take the needle much further and continue to pass it along to other women in these spaces that we've continuously been told are not for us. It takes one person to make the brave step to put their name on the ballot, and I hope that some of what I've done has encouraged and inspired others to do the same. Okay, so Wisconsin was the first. The thing I love about the Her Flag Project is all of these different states have different stories about what women have contributed. It speaks to how women come together and get things done. Her Flag does a great job of bringing different types of people together to talk about what happened 100 years ago and the challenges that we still face as women. And for all communities who are disenfranchised from the process, it's very ironic that we have this conversation 100 years later and our votes are still being tested. These conversations are necessary for us to realize we have a long ways to go and that our freedoms are still at stake. With the women's suffrage movement, it proves that it could take years and decades, but that we shouldn't give up and that we have to keep working together and disrupt systems of government and processes in order to be heard and not let the conversation be the end of it. I'm here in Arkansas in this incredible historic room. It's their old Supreme Court. After the last presidential election, I was really concerned about the direction the country was going. I really wanted her flag to create a positive moment where Republican, Democrat, Independent could come feel good about American history. So we're delighted to have the first lady of the great state of Arkansas here today. Oftentimes the women were arrested for speaking out in public. The First Lady of Arkansas, who is a Republican woman, kicked off the event today. It's really meaningful to have a safe place for every party affiliation to come and celebrate being an American and acknowledging this really important anniversary. The other part of her flag is we always have a performing artist, so we have an incredible group of musicians here today. boys and fling it to the wind mother wife and daughter let it shelter and defend equal rights our motto is we're loyal to the end giving hey, the Daniel, ballot to up? the mothers hurrah hurrah we bring the jubilee hurrah hurrah the homes they shall be free so we'll sing the chorus from the mountains to the sea giving the ballot to the mothers there were 340 applicants, but only yes. 36 were chosen. Yes, is that yeah, huh? isn't that great? Well, how did you, you know, what's It's the hard. Criteria? In some states, it was gruelingly brutal. <laughs> was it brutal to pick Well, Nicole, Nicole is amazing. Her work is incredible. Can I go give her a first <laughs> Oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi. Oh, good to see you. <laughs> um, I want to introduce Nicole LaRue, who's sitting right here, who is the artist that made the artwork for New Hampshire. Yeah. Some of her clients include the Women's March. This is the fabulous human being that created that epic logo. How does it feel to have this logo, this art that you made, have so much power behind it now and like all these feelings and emotions Super and like what does that feel it's like? It's crazy. For me, the most important part, I think it's changed my trajectory. So my two new books are on kid activists. You know, we just can't really make change until we're actually in there. We're there. Yeah. <laughs> Women and little girls are told they're different and maybe they're not as good. 
When a little girl opens up her history book first time in school, she doesn't see herself very often there. And until women's stories are given their due, we're gonna have a problem from the get-go. Our world doesn't get better unless women are in the mix. We're critical components to making life better for every American. What we have to say, our opinions, how we see life is unbelievably valuable. One woman you probably haven't read about in your history books is Victoria Woodhull. She was far ahead of her time and had many revolutionary ideas about women's roles, culture, and government. Born to a poor family in rural Ohio, she was the first woman stockbroker, a clairvoyant, author, publisher, self-made millionaire, suffrage fighter, sexual revolutionary, the first woman to address the U.S. Congress, and the first woman to run for president. She worked alongside Susan B. Anthony on women's suffrage. However, Anthony found her lewd and indecent and cut the power on Woodhull's speech at the National Women's Suffrage Convention of 1871. Although Woodhull was considered a controversial figure in her day, she was an important trailblazer for generations of women to follow. There it is, see? see? Crazy stuff, oh, so pretty. So this is my 17th state capital to see on the tour because it's the 17th stripe to go on today. Is it really 17? 17, 17 I've been, yes. 17 out of 36. Whew. I always look to see if there's any acknowledgement of women's history, if we're used just as props, as nude props. This is Utah, you're not gonna see much nudity here. Yeah, yeah. There's always a dude with a gun. Oh, we got a native woman and a baby. Yeah, that's great. As usual, it's a hall full of paintings of old white guys. There's a painting of a woman voting right here. Well, didn't Utah give women the right to vote right from the beginning? Or? Well, they were voting in state elections very early, yes. A lot of the West was like that. In this building, Utah women cast the first votes of the women's rights movement. We all rejoice that Utah is a state with her women free and enfranchised citizens. Ugh, makes me cry. So this is the stripe that is representing Utah. Jan says, I wanted Utah's contribution to reflect the spirit of change and justice that female emancipation has fostered. You know, I think there are a lot of Democrats or liberal folks that kind of move away from patriotism and don't want to raise the flag or talk about. And I think that's dangerous when one party gets to own patriotism. What people worry about is that patriotism can be exclusive and it also can be very white. And the flag gets hijacked. It's a symbol and therefore it can symbolize things that become sensitive for different populations. So maybe it's time to discuss that. And perhaps that's your redefinition of the flag as it's an inclusive flag. I was probably 14 years old when I took a school trip to Washington, D.C. And the thing that really stuck with me was the Star Spangled Banner flag. It was tattered and torn, and it felt like you could see the history of the country in it. I tangibly could identify with this object in American history that I could imagine me sewing. I could imagine my mother sewing. I had watched my mother, my grandmother, my aunt sew my whole life, and I loved it. It made perfect sense to use a flag as a vehicle to celebrate this anniversary. When the suffrage fight was happening, they had a ratification banner that Alice Paul would put a star on every time a state ratified. So it just seemed like such a perfect continuation of that legacy of the American suffrage fight. Beautiful day, beautiful, beautiful sunny. It's gonna be an amazing, beautiful day. I am in Sacramento, California, and it's the last trip of the year. It's been challenging, and I'm really tired. I'm like a band on tour, just constantly going to a different place and having to perform. 
I have a chronic illness called interstitial cystitis, and it's stress triggered big time. So I'm in a lot of pain today, and uh, I'm gonna push through. My name is Marilyn Artis, and uh, I'm an artist and a suffrage era nerd and an activist from Oklahoma City. Throughout my life, things that scare me, I do. If it scares me, I jump in there because I want to learn and constantly be pushing myself to grow and be a more evolved human being. My true core is to be an introvert and to want to be alone a lot. But I really wanted to get comfortable with public speaking and being a performance artist. Everybody say suffrage. suffrage. <laughs> I learned long ago that collaborating with other people is energizing. Okay, I'm one with attitude. <laughs> it makes life and art and everything just so much more fun and enjoyable. So it's worth the, the struggle to do it. My great-great-grandmother Elizabeth Cady Stanton publicly demanded the vote in 1848. It took 72 years, but we did it. Here is the niece of Susan B. Anthony. And here we had the great-great-great-grandson of Frederick Douglass, yes. who supported women's right to vote. Yes. With the Rose Parade on the very first day of 2020. We're in Pasadena. There are a hundred women from all over the country and we're gonna be walking with this float that Pasadena celebrates 2020 created and we're all in our awesome suffrage costumes. <laughs> come true to be here. We get this close to these floats. They are incredible. There are a million people that line the streets. America's so starved for positive energy and hope and to see that many people and look them in the eye and smile and wave and have this beautiful celebration. It's a once in a lifetime, dreamy, incredible, feminist, suffrage high. The 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment is this year, 2020. So I've been to 19 states. I drove over 22,000 miles last year. What's happening today is I'm sewing the Starfield onto the shorter stripes. So today is when this sucker really becomes a flag. Today is the day it's gonna look like a flag, finally! <laughs> Lines. They are souvenirs from harder times. I punched out the glass when it got in my way. Well, I could see out, but it wouldn't let me stray. There we go so far. There's her plus so far. <laughs> we really want it to be hanging on the outside of a building during the next presidential election in Washington, D.C. 
fast-breaking developments in the coronavirus emergency in the U.S., the number of cases soaring. New nationwide guidelines for Americans across this country in the fight against the coronavirus, urging Americans not to gather in groups larger than 10. Americans are urged not to travel unless absolutely necessary. Roughly three out of four Americans now under orders to stay home. When COVID hit, I quit driving broke my heart to not get to be in the actual state and be with the artists that made the stripe. But in the bigger picture of things, there's a lot of really rough things happening. People were dying. People were dying all over the country and the world. So I'm like, I can live stream this and this is okay. So this is my very first live stream of her, of her flag performance. Woo! Yeah, the news is tough out there. Um, it just changes minute by minute. So I'm going to, it's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to, to just go on. We're here in my hometown, Oklahoma city, um, right in my driveway. The rainbow spot of live streaming, the sewing of this was that people from all over the country could watch the streaming, which was nice. Tomorrow I sew on the 33rd stripe, my home state and I'm pinning it on right now. We realize like we can do this. We can have an outside event. Today, let us celebrate the good that we have sown to know that change can come even when so much feels unknown. May we be reminded of the greatness that underdogs can do when they fight for the good of all, not some privileged few. May we go out into this day inspired by hard work meeting chance to believe that the quest for societal progress is not a losing stance. Embracing uncertainty while doing the work we can do, we move from short-sightedness to a grander, truer, all-loving view. And now Oklahoma! Woo! I love you guys! It's August 18th, and it is officially the 100th anniversary. It is the day that Tennessee passed the 19th Amendment. So we're here in Nashville, and we're going to sew this stripe on today. Welcome, everybody. We are so happy to be here today. So I am here to sew on Tennessee stripe right here, right now, live in this gorgeous auditorium. I wish you all were here with us, but you're here with us virtually. I am here with Higgins Bond, who created the Tennessee Stripe. This has been quite an honor for me to be part of this. I wanted to highlight some of the uh, African-American women that were instrumental in the suffragette movement and the civil rights movement. Ida B. Wells, Mary Church Terrell, Rosa Parks, Ella Baker, Fannie Lou Hamer. When the 19th Amendment came about, it gave mostly white women the freedom to vote, but it still took a long time for everyone. So I wanted to highlight that struggle for, for all women because um, it's been a long road and we're still struggling to keep the vote. The right to vote is such a uniquely wonderful thing to America. So many people take the act of voting for granted. If this project helps to remind people of all the suffragettes that went through the harassment that they went through to get the vote. If this reminds them of that sacrifice, then maybe we're doing a really good thing. The Tennessee Stripe is on! Woohoo! Let's hoist this sucker up. It's about education. It's about valuing women's history. When we learn about the history, then you learn to care. You learn that your voice matters. Highlighting some of these women like Ida B. Wells, I hope it will inspire this new generation of young girls. Ida B. Wells was born during the Civil War to enslaved parents. One day in 1862, at the age of 20, she boarded a train from Memphis to Woodstock, Tennessee, and decided she didn't want to sit in the blacks only section. When the conductor asked her to leave, she refused. It took three men to drag her off the train. She even bit the conductor on the hand during the fight. She sued the railroad company and was awarded damages. However, the verdict was overturned during an appeal. 
In 1913, during the National Suffrage Parade in Washington, D.C., she and the other black suffrage fighters were told to march in the back so as not to upset the Southern delegates. In the midst of the chaos of the parade, Wells joined the white suffragettes in the front and walked alongside them to represent her state of Illinois. This is the inaugural exhibition of her flag and uh, couldn't be a better place for it to be. It's a absolute dream come true for her flag to premiere on the Clinton Presidential Library on the day the 19th Amendment was federally enrolled into the Constitution. It feels very surreal, like somebody pinched me. Having her flag on the side of the library is just an incredibly special opportunity. The ability to vote, not just a right, but a responsibility. It's not hyperbole to say that people died yes. for our right to vote, literally. The story of women's suffrage is overlooked. To see that reflected in, in her flag, I hope that it serves as an inspiration. Getting the vote is not the end, it's just the beginning. We're fighting for equal pay. We're fighting for equal access to education. We're still fighting this fight. This story doesn't end. Her flag doesn't end. This is only the beginning of this journey. I think about Betsy Ross or any of these objects at the Smithsonian and the people that made them. The history that they made became part of our legend and our story. I hope her flag can continue to educate and, and raise awareness about women's history and voting. This election, there's a lot at stake. Americans forget how voting is power. Voting is how we change things. There is a band of women, and to our manner born, emerging from the darkness past and looking toward the morn. Their mothers labored, waited through a night without a star. The morning shows a suffrage flag that bears a woman's star. Hurrah, hurrah, for equal rights, hurrah. Hurrah for the suffrage flag that bears the woman's star. This band is for all reforms, war shall be at an end. Bayonets and swords shall rust, we'll use the brain, the pen. Laden with precious freight, now thunders on the progress car. At the headlight waves a suffrage flag that bears the woman's star. Hurrah, hurrah, for equal rights, hurrah. Hurrah for the suffrage flag that bears the woman's star. The ship of state for ages was guided by starlight. Till the cluster in our flag almost dispelled the night. Tis freedom's day, our flag shall be a sun no night can mar. We'll add the light of the suffrage flag that bears the woman's star. Hurrah, hurrah, for equal rights, hurrah. Hurrah for the suffrage flag that bears the woman's star. Thus evolves the grandest triumph of dual human race. Church and state, the home and school, and law and love embrace. We'll have a perfect nation, we'll march from near and far. To glory neath the stars and stripes, it shall bear the woman's star. Hurrah, hurrah, for equal rights, hurrah. Hurrah for the stars and stripes, it shall bear the woman's star.